telling. Uh, I've not got long got in from work, but today I thought I would do a quick um, April wrap up of the seven books I read at the beginning of April that don't include my Eurovision or Thumb ones, and a quick haul of some of the books that I've um, accumulated this month too. I'm not sure how the lighting's going to be, but we'll go with it. Uh, so first for April, I read Home by Julie Andrews. This is obviously a non-fiction. It's like a biography slash memoir of her years in Hollywood. So I was looking forward to that because of The Sound of Music and Mary Poppins. And she does talk about those, but she talks about quite a few of her other movies as well. But it only goes up to a certain year. Now, I can't remember which year it is, but I was looking forward to her talking about doing the voiceovers for Shrek and being in the Princess Diaries movies and what else is she in? Being the voiceover in Despicable Me and things like that. And she didn't get that far. And I thought, mm. I think she's doing it in stages, but that's still the Hollywood years. So I was a bit disappointed about that. So I'll give it three stars because actually... She didn't give a lot of her own personal views and a lot of stuff. I felt she was just recording what had gone on hist historically. It was just writing, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. And I wanted a bit more from it, so I was a bit disappointed. I listened to it from my, on Audible. No, it was nice to hear her voice as she said it, but yeah, I was a bit disappointed with it. So it was okay, and I give it three stars. Then I reread The One by Kira Cass, which I think is the, is it the third in the um selection series i listen to it on script i give it four stars this is a ya it's like a cross between i'll always say this a cross between the hunger games and the bachelor um yeah so i really enjoyed that um next well it's this month now in may i will be reading um the next two with becca from becca fowl and Chloe from Chloe Reads Books, so um, I'm looking forward to that. Then I read This Will Only Hurt a Little by Busy Phillips. Now I, I've i always liked her in uh, Dawson's Creek. She, was it Audrey, a character within Dawson's Creek? Um, in Cougar Town, I've seen a couple of uh, seasons of that. And I watched her in Freaks and Geeks as well. So I, I like doing white chicks. I've seen her in quite a lot of things. So I thought, I think I'll quite like this. She comes across as quite bitter in this book. And apart from Michelle, Willi Michelle Williams, who she's obviously got quite a good relationship with and they've stayed friends all this time. And she obviously is a good friend to her. She's been there, obviously, through the death of Heath Ledger, etc. Um, I think she's the god... Yeah, she's the godmother of... Um, Matilda, Michelle's little girl. It doesn't sound like she gets along with that many of the rest of her colleagues. And she did come across in that video as quite full of herself. I have no problem with confidence. And I think especially in the acting industry, you've obviously got to have belief in yourself. Otherwise, other people won't. But she just didn't come across well. And there is a couple of instances in there where she's been through stuff that no person should have to go through. She was... Um, basically sexually assaulted um at least once in a lifetime and that's just wrong no matter who you are um so i did feel for her um and i thought i just thought it was awful um however um like i say she just doesn't come across well in that book at all so i gave that i give that two stars in the end because it really wasn't what i expected it to be i wanted to hear a lot more about behind the scenes in the program she's been in and she does to an extent, but like it doesn't sound like she really got along well with a lot of the Dawson's Creek cast, which, you know, that's the way it goes, isn't it? But I just, I, you always like to think that the people in some of your favourite shows got along really well. Like like the Friends cast, you hear that they got along really well. And when they went into discussions about the contract and the fees per episode, they went in together and so they all got equal. And that was a lovely story to hear. Um, I got the impression that um, with Dawson's Creek... They didn't really spend that much time together outside, apart from her and Michelle. So um, there you go. Just disappointed with it. Um, then I read Quest for Glory by Saul Manchernani, which is the, I want to say, fourth book in the School for Good and Evil series. 
please listen to this on audible as well a lot of these ones i've listened to on audible because i was still struggling with my eyes um this is classed as a middle grade series but i think as you get further on through the series they feel a bit more ya-ish because it's a lot more about relationships between um the couples in it i gave it three stars um, i'm used to reading them not listening to them but this one I still like the story, it was still good, but there was parts, I just think it was. It didn't have to be as long as it was, to be frank. So, um, yeah, I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen next, because it did end in a way that I thought, wow, um, the next book's going to be interesting. Uh, then I reread a book called How to Hold a Grudge by Sophie Hannah. This is a non-fiction I got this out from the library again. I gave this one five stars. It's basically talking about how holding a grudge can be a positive thing. It doesn't have to be that you feel really negative towards somebody and never forgive them. It's talking really about forgiving someone for your benefit and then not forgetting it for future so that you're never treated that way again by anybody else. So it goes through the different levels. She's got like a level system of like a 10, 10 fold grudge and then all the way down to um, really shouldn't be holding a grudge over that at all. And it's just really interesting. Um, so yeah, enjoyed that reread. Uh, then I read Outer Order in a Calm by Gretchen Rubin. I listen quite often to Gretchen Rubin's um, podcast about The Happiness Project. I've read the book The Happiness Project um then i read the happiness project there's another one that i read the four tendencies i've read that and then this one's more about decluttering your life and i'm all about decluttering i love it not that you could tell from my house but i try my best when i can um so yeah i gave that four stars this is one that i'd bought myself and was on the tbr um then i picked up from the library you've got this by louise redknapp but the same, a massive fan. I uh, wouldn't say I was a massive fan of Eternal. Um, my favourite song of theirs was um, Wanna Be The Only One. I loved that song. I can't remember the name of the, the, the guys in the group that they joined up with for that song, but it, I love, I've always loved that song. Um, she, I didn't realise she was a friend with um, Kelly... Oh, I can't remember her surname, but Kelly from Eternal. I didn't realise they were friends from school first and she kind of brought her along to this group but then Kelly ended up being better friends with um is it Verna and I can't remember the names but the other two girls in the group and then she kind of became a bit distanced and as you know then she left Eternal um and then she talks a bit about her marriage and being on Strictly and she's telling her story of how that went because a lot of people assume she was having a relationship with Kevin and that's why her marriage broke down, but that's not how it happened at all. I don't even think she speaks to Kevin now. Um, so I gave that four stars. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm not a big fan, but I liked the idea of her talking about being a mom and um, how important friendships are and things like that. So yeah, that's worth a read. So those are the seven that I read that weren't Eurovision related. I'm not going to mention the other books that I read in relation to Eurovision because I want to include them in a in a TBR uh, in a wrap up specifically for Eurovision. So I thought in the second half of this I would talk about the books that I pulled this month. So I will start with this one, The Dinner Guest by BP Walter. I ordered this off Waterstones, a pre-order. It says, uh, four people walked into the dining room that night. One would never leave. Sorry, my lighting's going to keep going. Uh, Matthew, the perfect husband. Titus, the perfect son. Charlie, the perfect delusion. Rachel, the perfect stranger. Charlie didn't want Rachel at the book club. Matthew wouldn't listen. Um, it says, classic crime meets Donata in this nerve-shredding domestic noir thriller. Set in West London and the dinner that ends in death. One actually, Sophie Hanna, who I've just mentioned from um, How to Hold a Grudge, is, is um, put on it immensely gripping. I stayed up till past 2 a.m. to finish this. I won't stay up till 2, 2 a.m., I can't handle that. But yeah, one that I definitely wanted to try. Then the lovely um, Mo from Paperback Mo did a Twitter competition. Um, he did a question and answer with the two authors of The Seven Wonders, um, May Gaynor and Charlie Todd. And I watched that and you could enter a competition um, to get the book. I love camper vans. I've got a, 
a big um, canvas in my living room that me and Andy bought when we went to Lincoln for my birthday once and it's got one, two, three, I think it's got about four multicoloured, uh, different coloured um, camper vans in a line. I, ju I just love how they look. Um, I don't think they make the Volkswagen ones like these with the colours on anymore, do they? I think um, they've stopped now, but uh, yeah, maybe if we could afford one one day when we retire, me and Andy will try and find one and go travelling. That would be nice. It says, um, all Iris Holloway wants to do is see some of the world and have fun with her friends. She's determined to make as many memories as possible before they go their separate ways in September. Artie, on the other hand, is left feeling after being rejected from his dream university. All he wants is to get out of Brighton and forget the bad feelings he's left leaving behind. The two are thrown together on a last-minute summer road trip, full of fun, adventure and plenty of distractions from their worries. But with tensions among the group running high and confusing new feelings developing between the two, the two, things start to get complicated. Can they avoid being swept up in the whirlwind of emotions that come with first love and still make the most of their summer? Now, I don't know. I can't remember where they travel around. I don't know if it's this country. Um, so I don't think it can be used for Eurovision-a-thon. But I am eager to give that a go. So thank you, Mo, for putting the competition live and for uh, me winning it. Uh, I'm really excited for that. I think these two, if I remember correctly did it as like a university in part of the university course right wrote a book and then and then had it published so that's really exciting uh then i ordered this one sorry lighting again ordered this one from waterstones as well and um, this is another podcast i listen to how to be fine what we learned from living by the rules of 50 self-help books it's jolenta greenberg and Kristen meinzer and they basically follow different self-help books um each month and talk and then discuss it on the um on the podcast so i think they do one episode where they talk about the book and what their thoughts heading into it are then they do like a week long of that um living by the reels of that self-help book and then they come back for the next episode and talk about how they found it it's just dead interesting and then they've, they've obviously done a book on it so i wanted that then i i loved john when i say i loved john mars i've read majority of book his books starting with the one then i read i won't be able to remember now when she disappears i think was one of them then i read have we got any more written in here when she disappears oh i can't remember them all now but he's written quite a few and then there was one what lies be between us and I started reading it and it was just freaking, I think I wasn't in the right place of mind to read it. And I got 75% of the way through this book and something just didn't sit right with me. And I thought I've got to stop and I'm gutted because it would have been so easy just to carry on and finish it. But mentally it wasn't doing me any good. But then I found out about this one, The Minders. It said, um, five strangers guard our secrets, only four can be trusted. So uh, in the 21st century, information is king, but computers can be hacked and files can be broken into. So a unique government initiative has been born. Five ordinary people have been selected to become minders, the latest attempt to thwart cyber terrorism. Transformed by a rev revolutionary medical procedure, the country's most classified information has been taken offline, turned into genetic code and implanted inside their heads. Together, the five know every secret, the truth behind every government lie, conspiracy theory and cover up. In return, they're given the chance to leave their problems behind in a blank state to start their lives anew but not everyone should be as trusted especially when they each have secrets of their own they'll do anything to protect would we class that as sci-fi because i don't read much sci-fi and i want to branch out so if it is all the better um so that sounds like one i can cope with i hope so hopefully soon i will get onto that one uh, then i got um off amazon the foundling by stacy halls i think i had a, a thing where i went on and like a few of the books i wanted were like 350 four pound and i thought oh, I'm, not, I'm going for it and um, this one might even even been two pound fifty or two pound i thought oh, i've got to get it um two women bound by a child and a secret that will change everything london 1754 six years after leaving her illegitimate daughter clara at london's foundling hospital Bess bright returns to reclaim the child she had never known dreading the worst that clara has died in care Bess is astonished to be told that she has already claimed she has already claimed her her life is turned upside down she tries to find out who has taken her little girl and why um, my friend Claire in work told me about this one and I kept meaning to get it. Now I've got my own copy, so I've got no excuse. So I definitely want to read that one. 
Then I pre-ordered the second in the Strange World Travel Agency, The Edge of the Ocean by L.D. Lipinski. I read the first one. I give it three stars. I quite enjoyed it because I've read a lot of middle grade that I really loved. I couldn't give it any higher than that. But I thought, surely, once you get into your stride of things as an author, I'm hoping the second one will be even better. Um, so, uh, Flick is now a badge-wearing member of the Strange World Society, so when an urgent summons arrives from the world of the break, she and Strange World's guardian, Jonathan, immediately hop into a suitcase to take them there. The break is a flat water world filled with unpredictable mer people, mysterious water creatures and enormous ships sailed by frightening pirates and it's shrinking the edge of the ocean is coming ever closer the people of the break need to leave and soon but how do you sail a ship through a suitcase so uh, yeah excited for that one then i've heard a lot of people talk about the oh what's it called the women's murder club series i know steph from steph loves and siobhan were both reading these together uh i think I know Connor's a big James Patterson fan. And then my sister has read, I think, the first three of these. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try one. I've never read a James Patterson. For my 21 for 2021, I wanted to read at least one James Patterson. I'm telling a lie. I have read a James Patterson. I read, I read Guilty Wives for a works book club, gosh, quite a few years ago now, maybe five years ago. Um no, not five years ago, plus that, maybe eight years ago now. And I did remember enjoying it, um, but I want to start this series. So I've got the first one now, and I'll try that, and I'll see if I like it. And if I do, I'll try and catch up with my sister. She's not a big reader, so the fact that she likes these means that there's obviously something to them. So if I can catch up to her, then maybe we can buddy read some together. So I'm excited for that. Then um, for World Book Night, yeah, World Book Night, the library where I work, got copies of the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Um, I really want to try it. We're doing um, some sessions called Reading Friends at our library at the minute where we run groups for different age groups of people that we either do on like a Zoom type call or uh, just a phone call and it's up to six people and we just chat about different things it's really just giving people a chance to have a chat but sometimes we talk about books as well so um i know some of the people who are part of the group were sent copies of the midnight library so when these came in i thought well if i read it as well we've got something extra to talk about so and um, that's one where nora's life has been going from bad to worse then at the stroke of midnight on her last day on earth she finds herself transported to a library there she's given the chance to undo her regrets and try out each of the other lives she might have lived which raises the ultimate question with infinite choices what is the best way to live i haven't read a matt haig yet um i believe there's trigger warnings in this for suicide so or suicide attempt so uh, just be wary of that and then um, I read a net, net, Netflix, Net Galley, um, Tracy Bloom book called The Wife Who Got a Life. In fact, I've been, um, the publisher got in touch with all, obviously all the people who'd um, taken the book out from Net Galley said thank you for reviewing it. And we've got so many copies away. If you want to gift one to a friend, uh enter this competition like email us and we'll pick somebody so i've entered my friend so i'll let you know if uh, i win and she gets a copy of that um anyway i did enjoy that then i f i had a look what other one she's got out and there was one called nobody has sex on a tuesday i think last month i showed you that in a haul um and then i think it was library of alexandria uh, mentioned this one which is I will marry George Clooney by Christmas and I saw it in my local hospice charity shop and thought yes I am going to get that out so it says um, it comes a time in every woman's life when the only answer is to marry George Clooney slogging her guts out in a chicken factory while single handedly breaking up a teenage daughter bringing up a teenage daughter who hates her is far from the life than 36 year old Michelle has planned but marrying the most eligible man on the planet by Christmas could change all that couldn't it sometimes your only option is to dream the impossible because you never know where it might take you I'm assuming she doesn't marry George Clooney but she's aspiring to so we will see so that's all of my haul i think i've done quite well there that's not including ones that i've taken taken out of the library but you'll see most of those because a lot of the ones i've took out recently are for your visionathon and then the ones that i got out of um, my local library the other day i already showed you in my your week your visionathon week one blog
so go and check those out there if you want to see so i hope this was okay quick wrap up quick haul all together awesome so i will speak soon bye